Hey, Dexter. Uh, it's a case of the Mondays. Lacey and I are back from New Orleans. We survived somehow. We did, kind of. <laughs> um, but it was, you know what, all joking aside, there was a lot of work done. I, I, I try to translate it to some people who I, I was very cautious as not usual for Tristan of like posting a lot on social media because I like to share like parties and victories, but I forget sometimes people don't like to see that because they just assume that you're just a partier. But, you know, we went to work. We did a full day of stuff for us in the background. Yeah. And then Saturday, as as many people may have seen, um, Jack Worla, Liam Schubel from the IFCO said this was one of the most successful IFCO meetings. And um, I mean, what was your takeaways from the IFCO meeting? I mean, you've been a part of a lot. What was your take? Was it a great productive day? For IFCO? Yeah, I, I agree. What I really loved about it was um, the strategy session. So it wasn't just a, hey, let's do a year in review. I mean, we really sat down and masterminded a lot of ways to uh, grow the IFCO. And I thought, you know, with the people in that room, we all have a very good but different strengths. And being able to identify those and leverage them in a way that will help the organization was very powerful. So I'm excited to see what happens this year. It's I, I my 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 two cents are uh, I think last year was a great cleanup year for the IFCO. I know if you threw a dart on the map, a lot of people would go, "What is the IFCO?" I don't know what sure. the IFCO is. I think that this year is going to be a coming out party for the IFCO <laughs> with with uh, with a new uh, with new perks for members, which I think will excite a lot of chiropractors Ooh, yeah. and. And on Lacey's, one of her committees is the sponsorship committee. So if you're a business wanting to collaborate and connect with chiropractors, uh, you can connect with Lacey about that because there's going to be a ton of great collaborative, uh, cool advertising and networking uh, opportunities for you out there. So great weekend in New Orleans. Um, I left my keys. I probably left my liver there too. You left uh, your keys there? I left my keys there. So I, I had to stay outside in my uh my apartment building for three hours because they're a bunch of in Miami, a bunch of older women who said, I can't get down because my hair is not done and I can't, and I won't put a bag over my face. Oh, so, so um, I am on for a whole week of, I'm doing starting to cleanse. I'm going to do the keto thing. Like everyone's doing. It's one okay. thing I noticed in new Orleans, a lot of the smart people were on keto. So I should start doing that. <laughs> um, and so one of our topics today we're going to talk about, you know, uh, here is something to tie that back into the keto thing because there's a thing called – I've never even heard of this, but I've thought about this before with Kleenex. Um, and it's called genocide when brands yes. get too big. And it made me start thinking about the brands in chiropractic. Now, genocide is, is kind of ironic because it's really about um, like companies that build up a brand and that brand kind of owns the space, if that makes sense. So like when I think Kleenex, you know, that's really tissue paper, but they own the space. So when anyone ever says Kleenex, you know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, there's been a few kind of things that were actually brands, but people might not know this. Like Escalator was actually a brand, but they screwed up uh, following a trademark application so Escalator just became kind of the one-off for yep. what we know today. Uh, Band-Aids is another example. Um, you know, I'm in jacuzzi? The 80s. What about Jacuzzi, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, Jacuzzi. You think of Jacuzzi, and, and it's just like any type of Whirlpool, Whirlpool thing. Whirlpool is a Jacuzzi, right? Oh, I'm going to get yeah. a Jacuzzi, yeah. Uh, yeah. Aspirin, Xerox. So I was thinking kind of related to that. We see a lot in the chiropractic space people developing their own brands and it's really unique in chiropractic. There is some in surgical space, but it's, it's to me, I think it's like a lot if it compared to in, in chiropractic because we have the ring dingers, which is actually being trademarked right now or it's been no, trademarked. Oh, is it really? Yep. Dr. Gregor, your Houston chiropractor, Gregor Johnson has a trademark on ring dinger. Uh, we know Dean Harrison and, and CVP is uh, is trademark registered. Mm -hmm. um, there is Network Spinal. Mm -hmm. So, Lacey, I want to ask you this. Does having those delineations, does having those branded the ring dinger or Network Spinal, does it help hurt or 
is it null and void for chiropractic when it comes to the overall picture and product of chiropractic? I mean, honestly, I think it's pretty insignificant. I mean, if I look at my, if I was to take my patient base in any of my offices and ask them if they know the difference between knee chest and Blair and Nuka, I mean, the majority of them don't even know that, right? And so I think that, listen, within chiropractic, within the chiropractic profession, us as chiropractors or those that are involved like yourself are highly exposed to the understanding of different mm. techniques. It is it is rare that a patient truly knows. And I'm not saying that patients don't know because some of them right. do come to you and say, hey, do you know another NUCA doctor? Hey, do you know another network doctor? But I would say from the majority of the population and individuals out there, they don't know the differences between technique. So yeah, I don't I don't think that it's helping or hurting chiropractic. I actually think it's probably pretty neutral. People look for a chiropractor more often than looking for a blank chiropractor. Yeah. The only one I'm concerned about, obviously, is the ring digger. Because I think I think Donnie and, and the network team and the network chiropractors have cultivated a great following and and, and and I'm really, really grateful to them because of their their people, their patients, their clients really have a deep understanding of like the intricacies of network. But the ring dinger is one because when we were in Boca at the marketing workshop, we also got a chance because there was a personal injury lawyer convention seminar going on. And I literally had, I think I told you guys about this the next day, we're, yeah. we're, we're in the shuttle from, from the one hotel to the other, and there's this old lawyer um, from from Pennsylvania there, and he's telling me about, we're talking, I go, well, I'm wearing chiropractic. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, my dad was talking about one of the old PI lawyers who was famous. I know Tim will listen to us later. You can put it in the comments. Um, the ring dinger, he, the PI lawyer said, you guys got to get rid of that guy. My concern is you now have people that are calling Ryan Bones literally has people that call his office and say, can you do a ring dinger? Is there going to be a point in time because of social media, YouTube, Instagram, where the ring dinger has more cultural authority than the analysis of chiropractic and the specific chiropractic adjustment? Now I throw it back to you on that. Is there any concern there? I mean, there's the concern is that that was a slightly viral video and uh, you know, people saw, I would think the majority of people thought that that was nuts over, hey, I'm going to call a chiropractor. No, 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 this is not just one video. He's got a whole corporate, like, this yeah, is his story. I mean, I didn't even know that. Like, I didn't know that he has, like, this corporate now technique. It's a branded technique. Yeah, I so think. It's a ton of visibility. But here, the reason yeah. that people are calling now and asking about it is because it is slightly relevant right now. But there's okay. 15 minutes of fame. I think a year from now, That's two really years smart. from now, people are not going to know about the ring dinger. They're not going to be calling offices saying, can I get a ring dinger? First off, <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous. Just, what okay. happens? Comment, <laughs> comment below if it's happened to you. Please but, back me up on this. <laughs> <laughs> I've not ever had that happen. Anybody out there? have somebody call their office and ask for a ring dinger. I mean, <laughs> um, outside of bones, <laughs> but honestly, I think that it is more relevant now because it's new over the course of time. It is going to go away and it's not going to take over as the new chiropractic brand. That's just not going to happen. I mean, it, again, there's a lot of brands out there that have a lot of cultural authority and people do understand certain brands, but it's not like it takes over the chiropractic profession. I, I just don't see that happening. And I love, I wish we could get Dan on because he said that he um, wants to get on this conversation because I just nailed it. I think again, if we're looking at the majority of the population, all the people in the United States, most of them don't know about the ring dinger. They just don't. I mean, from a percentage standpoint. And so, yes, there's a few crazy people that saw that and thought that that could be good for them. But we uh -huh. can't we can't utilize those one offs and extrapolate it out into a this is permeating the rest of the United States and they're associating the ring dinger with chiropractic. I don't think that's true. That's just my two cents. This is the ultimate. This is Lacey is the ultimate wingman. Number one. Number two, she's the ultimate. If you're in a fire situation, that just she just she just answered that. That's why she's such a fantastic coach, 
because there's no panic in her. Here I am over here going, well, this PI lawyer just told me we got to get rid of this guy. Like we need to like figure out, you know, like um, that's why Lacey is, is, is awesome. We're going to talk about something, two other people that are really awesome that we're adding to the broadcast right now uh, is Clint Steele. Hey, from True Cairo, and he's got his, his wife. I got I to fit you guys in here. I got to fit you guys in here. Let's go. Oh, that's right. Here, here, here. We just get him if you can't. No, 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 no. We got you guys. We got you guys. We got you both. We got you guys. We're talking to, to, to True Cairo and one of our partners in, in summer camp helping us bring you people like Jay Abraham for three hours. You guys can go to come to summercamp.com. Uh, to get your tickets today before April 15th. And just a real brief announcement, February 14th, we'll be announcing our second major uh, keynote or camp counselor. I think we're still trying to come up with Norm Clature for the name. I don't I don't like speaker, Lacey. Never liked that word. Interesting. I'll have to, yeah. have to sit on that for a while and think about it. But Clint, Tina, what are you guys doing? How do you guys enjoy you? What do you guys think about the ring dinger? <laughs> we missed we, we missed it, man. Missed, we just we got on. It. We were having problems with our phone, so we don't know what the ring dinger is. See? Oh, okay. Right. See, I'm telling you, Tristan. <laughs> and what? There's so much information out there. It's going to get pushed away with new information at some point. Well, there is new information <laughs> yeah, that's coming right back from we cry out. Tell us about the information. Hey, you can say us later, Lacey. <laughs> Well, you know, Phil Rogers just said, Phil, hey, Phil, just got in the 100 plus PVA group the other day. Tell us about that group. Tell us what's going on with True, uh, True Cairo and the 100 plus PVA group. The PVA 100 plus Cairo, man. That's what we, uh, we, we put together because, you know, ultimately it comes down. We talked about this the other day, Tristan. You know, it comes down to how much impact are you having on your community uh, through chiropractic? It's not about, you know, seeing someone for, for pain, neck pain or low back pain and 10, 11, 12 visits later, they're out the door never to see a chiropractor again, right? And so we have to use something to measure that with, and that's where we use the PVA patient visit average. And so what I did was when I when I took my PVA from 12 to over 100 plus, my impact in the community just skyrocketed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what we're doing with the PVA 100 plus um, Cairo group is we're just providing, there, there was a system that I put together, eight point system that allowed me to take my PVA from 12 to over 100. And uh, and so now we're using it with docs and helping them get, get to the same point. I love that. You know, I'm a big advocate for retention. I think that that, I mean, I, I whenever I go speak to student groups, I always tell them, you guys are asking the wrong questions. You're always asking, how do I get more new people in the door? Yep. You yep. need to be asking, how do I keep the ones that come through the door? Exactly. Like, it's so much more powerful. So I love the idea of this group. That's great, guys. So, so Lacey, I, I totally agree with you. And, and Tristan and I talked about this the other day. And there's so many people. Yeah, and, and new patients are important. There's so many people out there. I can get you 40 new patients a month or whatever. But, I mean, seriously, guys, at what point do you have enough patients that you don't – you don't? Exactly. Like my previous practice, 17 years, I had over 7,000 patient files. 7,000 patient files, guys, and, and I never saw more. I, I, my average was 12, okay, yeah. and how many yeah. times I saw them. Now I've been back in practice four years. I have less than 1,000 patient files, and my PBA is 100 plus. Yeah. Which group am I, am I making more of a difference from a health standpoint in? Mm -hmm. And you're much yep. less stressed. I'm much, much less stressed. <laughs> right. My overhead is down. My income's up. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. When when you guys uh, launched this, you, you shared with me, hey, you were you were in a mode before, and thankfully, uh, Michael Vissarelli from Amped, uh, you you connected with him. We see so many students coming through these other systems that don't resonate with what true chiropractic is. What do you think the challenges are for you guys? to connect with them more and where can people help you out in the chiropractic space? What could we do besides just advertising with us, but they're like the chiropractors, just regular chiropractors, how can they help you to help the profession? We, we've got, to, I think Lacey hit it right on the, on the, on the head is, is we got to get away from this. I need more new patients. I need more new patients and take them from, you know, from a, um, a standpoint of, I just want to, you know, thinking that chiropractic is just about neck and low back pain to, 
no way, this is so much more and I need to stay here for the rest of my life and get regular chiropractic adjustments. So. And I think getting them involved in groups like this is key. We've actually had some students that have recently joined yeah. the group, which I love, you know, so they're influenced yeah. by other chiropractors who have the higher PBAs. And just, just share the message. If you ask, you know, what can docs could do? Just help share the message that, guys, we need to get off this new patient merry-go-round. This is what's hurting chiropractic. If you go out, you know, when I when I compare my first practice where I had a PVA of 12 to my practice now where I have a PVA of 100 plus, um, the, the, the big difference is they don't they mm -hmm. don't think of me as a, a neck pain or a back pain doctor. And that's what we have to get away from. Too many yeah, people right. in the world think chiropractic is about neck and low back pain. If you go ask a thousand people, uh, I'm a chiropractor, what do you think I do? They're going to say something about, oh, you help backs, you help back pain or neck pain. And we, we've got to change that. And so that's what we call our group, the True True Cairo. That's why we call our company True Cairo is because ultimately we're sharing the truth of chiropractic. I mean, ultimately that's what it comes down to. And the thing is, people people want what we have. They just don't know we have it. And so when you share the truth with them, they're like, oh, well, wow, like this is what, I, this is what I've been looking for, right? Right. Right. <laughs> Well, guys, you're doing some big things. And one of the other things I love about True Cairo, I put the link up for the Facebook group, which is free to join. I have that up in the link, guys. The group name is PVA 100 Plus Cairo. If you want to search it or you can just search True Cairo uh, in Facebook and look in groups, and you'll see a couple um, uh, stamps there. But one of the other cool things I love, you know, it's so hard to, to look in your Rolodex in the old days or go on Facebook and ask for someone who's a true chiropractor who's right. truly tick centered and get the true answer. So you guys also offer uh, a directory site. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was Clint's brainchild because, you know, as we were sharing the truth with our following and people were coming in and, and uh, health issues were resolving all different kinds of health issues as a result of the care, they were asking, Hey, do you know a chiropractor in Kansas city? My sister lives there. So, I would be tasked with searching for chiropractors in the area. And it's, I mean, if, if you've ever tried it, it's, it's really difficult. You don't know who they are. You don't know anything about them. So he came up with the idea of putting together a database that house two chiropractors that practice, have the same philosophy and, and house them all in a database so that people could go and search for them just by putting in their zip code, their zip code, right? Yeah. And so this is actually working really cool, uh, Tristan. We had a, a Facebook Live, I'm in Maine. So we do every Monday, we do a Facebook live or every Tuesday, we do a Facebook live from our, from our office site. Right. Yeah. Uh, just to help promote our own office. But somehow this got this gets, I mean, we're social media, this gets out all over the place. And we had a lady down in North Carolina. I love the story. We had a lady in North Carolina that saw it somehow. And she says, wow, I want to, we were doing it on the immune system, right? Nothing to do with neck or low back pain. And she goes, wow, I want to find a chiropractor that, that focuses on this stuff in my area. She went to the database and there was a, a true Cairo that ten was like minutes 10, 10 yeah. minutes away from her. So it's pretty awesome. Here's the thing, like, you know, social media, you can put something out, but if it goes viral or even if it doesn't go viral, you've got people all over the world seeing this stuff. And then they got to ask themselves, well, I want to find a chiropractor that does this. Uh, you know, the local chiropractors are just about neck and low back pain or, uh, you know, I used to see a chiropractor. For, for my low back pain, but they didn't tell me any of this stuff. I want to find a, a true Cairo that focuses on, you know, the nervous system and subluxations and, and wellness and, and the whole bit. Love it. Uh, well, you guys can learn more about by going to truecairo.org, true Cairo without the E. Um, so true Cairo, T R U C H I R O.org. Uh, learn more there. Join the the private Facebook group. I want to thank you guys for stopping by and sharing yeah, with us. Thanks for having us. Thank you guys. Appreciate it, guys. Keep up the good work. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Those guys, I like those guys a lot. They're, I know. they're, they're just they're uh, you know especially and, and uh, you know we're going to talk about next how to be successful. But one of the things that's not on this upcoming list is have like well, maybe it is. I just didn't see it. But having that partnership, you know, you and Sean. Uh, you know, Clinton and his wife, I think that's, I always see that in our space, like strong, strong foundational uh, partnerships lead to success. But we're going to talk about Sam Altman, who no one's probably going to know, uh, but I'm a big fanboy of. Sam Altman is a uh, creator of Y Combinator. He's yeah. One, of the biggest, yeah, one of the biggest um, VCs 
in 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 the space of Silicon Valley and and beyond. And he just came out with his thirteen thoughts, basically looking at his his landscape of how to be successful. And there's a couple of definite like you know work hard. But there's one I want to start oh, with. Like, hold on, no, that's yeah. not. That work hard, especially coming from somebody in in that Silicon Valley area. I mean, I I love that. That's not just a given anymore. Like, uh, no, think about sure. no. Okay. Think okay. about how many how many people want to be able to just uh, open up and have things come easy to them. This idea that you can just put a shingle on the door and that new patients will flow. Like the whole idea of work hard. Really, and work hard is not like I work four days a week. Work hard is you pour every bit and ounce of your being into your business to get it to where you want it to go. Things are not, I mean, super simple. You can't expect to have a $5 million lifestyle and work three days a week. And every successful entrepreneur will tell you that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, think about Silicon Valley. There's so many people that hit it quickly because they had a startup or an app or something like that. So there is this, there is this kind of thing that people deal with that they want quick finances, I guess, quick success, right? You've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. And he does say in there in this article, it's not it's not clear why in the US it's it's becoming an issue, but you know, yeah. outside the U.S., where they're looking at China and other places, but the key is to not burn out. I want to yeah. ask you about that because, um, you know, I I don't think people realize this, but New Year's Eve, here we are. You know, I'm getting looks from my girlfriend like 11:45 p.m. right before New Year's. I'm text messaging people that are signing up for the special for summer camp. Yeah. You know, like, um, and we've shared before. You know, we we worked all day that new years and you know, how do you not burn out if you are going to work hard? What is your keys to not burning out? Well, first off, I, I also want to say, listen, you just need to work in a proportionate amount to the lifestyle that you want to live. That's it. Like mm -hmm. again, and I think that if you can clearly identify exactly what you want your life to look like, and for some people, they don't want a $5 million lifestyle. They just want to be comfortable and have quality family time and be able to go on vacations. You need to work in an effort to, to get the life that you want. And I think if you truly hone in on that, you have super clarity around your, your vision, what your life looks like, what you mm -hmm. want it to feel like, what you want to be able to do and accomplish then you don't get workout or burnout because the amount of work that you're putting in is driving you to the thing that you want. Mm. I think people get burnt out when they don't have clarity on what they're trying to achieve. And then they're working really hard and they don't know where they're going. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Cause not everybody wants that. And so you, it's okay. You should give yourself permission to say, this is the lifestyle I want. And it only requires this amount of work. And then you don't burn out because you're going exactly where you want to go. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, the most unusual one, though, was um, his – his. he does talk about get good at sales, yep. uh, focus. Um, but the one the one I really was like going, well, now how about that? Were all those individuals we hung out with this weekend at the IFTO, are they secretly geniuses? <laughs> Especially a man named Liam Schubel, the president of the IFCO. But I will say this, that Jack Borla, even your husband, shares this, have almost too much self-belief. Now, this has been hard for me in this space sometimes because I sometimes thought it was a gimmick with Liam. Now I'm wondering if he's been on to something. Self-belief is immensely powerful, Sam writes. The most successful people I know believe in themselves almost to the point of delusion. <laughs> cultivate this early as you get more data points that your judgment is good and you can consistently deliver results. My smash hit book, right? Let's yeah. what, what do you, what is, tell me what, the, what resonates with you when you, when you read that or heard about that. Well, I love when he was talking about Elon Musk and when uh -huh. he uh, went and visited him in his uh, SpaceX facility. And it was before, I guess it was before Elon was really doing a lot with it, but he said, he said with so much confidence and self-belief that he was going to be designing things that took us to Mars. And he saw Sam Altman walks away and goes, that's what that looks like. But I think that there's something to be true with that because mm -hmm. self-belief is also a outward reflection of mindset. 
internal mindset. And I think any entrepreneur out there, um, anybody that works for themselves and is a driver of their own income knows that when you start to waver in your mindset, when things get off track, when you start to have some disbelief, it manifests in your business. And so those people that have that high, high self-belief have a powerful mindset of their value and what they, and abundance and what they're worth and what their business should look like. And it allows them to drive closer and closer to, again, the success that they're trying to achieve. So I, I a hundred percent agree with it. If you're having yeah. a problem in your business, look at your mindset and the belief in if you can really accomplish it. You know, I, I, I feel it now and, and having been around it lately, it makes, it makes sense to even start your day with that kind of those positive mantras. I used to think that was, you know, that's what was that Saturday Night Live character. You're smart enough. You're good enough. I used to, you know, oh, right. maybe, maybe our generation kind of mocked it a little bit more, you know, but um, I, I can see the, the benefits of that. Um, so if you guys don't, if you want to see this article, it's on Sam Altman's blog. It's blog.samaltman.com. Uh, it'll be the first one up there. It's how to be successful. There's a bunch of really other great thoughts on that. Any other thoughts from you, Lacey, on that article? Yep. That nope. I have a good tip off of that, though. All right, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I um, one of the things is that you said that we should be starting our day off with affirmations, and you know, a lot of people like when you read um, any self help books or read. Uh, Anybody like Sam Altman, when they're talking about you know, changing your mindset, they always say, you know, start with these affirmations. But what I believe is I feel like that's not good enough because sometimes when we have a negative thought process about mm. ourselves, about where, what we can accomplish, about what our business can do, that negative thought process doesn't just happen when we wake up. It happens and comes up and bubbles up to the surface all day long. So if you have an affirmation that's extremely powerful and that is meant to change your way of thinking about something particular in your life, uh, you need to read it as many times that's necessary to break the negative thought process throughout the entire day. So if you have an affirmation, you read it in the morning. Maybe you read it on a break. Maybe you read it at lunch. Maybe you read it at night before you go to bed until you actually start changing your belief system and your way of thinking. So you need to interrupt that negative pattern as many times as possible. Maybe you put it on your phone to go off on alarm, an alarm, which is what I teach in a lot of Sean and I's courses. Maybe you put it up somewhere that you see all the time in your office so that you're reminded of that particular positive way of thinking to combat the negative way of thinking. That's my tip for today. Um, if, if I had to say what your favorite, if I would ask you what one of your favorite kind of affirmations or like simple ones, is there, is there one you don't mind sharing? Um, like, is your own or well, is, is I just, the private? I don't, it's up to you. No, 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 fine. I've always, I mean, and we talk about this all the time in our private groups, but I, I had a, um, hard time thinking very abundantly. Like my relationship with money from a very early age was not a, the best one. I didn't yeah. think that like money just came to you. I thought it was a direct reflection of like, you get up every day, work a nine to five job, and then you make a certain amount. Right. And so for me, I just had trouble thinking abundantly about money and the way that it flows to me about new patients and the way that it flows to me. Right. And so mm -hmm. for me, it was just the word abundance in order to get myself into an abundant mindset and not a lack mentality. I wrote the word abundance everywhere. It was on my planner. Um, I call it my abundance alarm and I would have an alarm clock go off um, every like hour with the word that abundance popped off. And I knew that it encompassed so many things in my life. And so mm -hmm. for me, I think a lot of people struggle with the abundance mindset. So that one I think is very powerful. And I got a chance to walk with you guys down the streets of New Orleans. Oh yeah. Uh, this last weekend. If you guys know Sean and Lacey's one of the, one of the, Oh, that's a BDC thing, like picking up money off the ground, yeah. uh, which I got to hear first when Sean presented at Berkshire's. Shout out. We're, we're less than two months away from the Berkshire philosophy, our Berkshire experience uh, event, uh, tickevent.com. You guys can use code uh, SUSHI for $100 off. But I first got to experience Sean talking about that, 
and then you sharing more about that at Money Matters, the first Money Matters I went to. Now we're literally walking down the street, <laughs> and I was like, what is up with these crackheads? Like, they're <laughs> picking stuff off the ground. Like, I go, you guys really do it? They're like, oh, no. And they look like they're on the beach at the sand with one of those <laughs> uh, metal detectors, but instead of the metal detector, it's their heads, and they're just scoping down left He's and right. Funny everywhere money is everywhere people you just got to be open to seeing it and having it come to you <laughs> that's all it's amazing uh guys uh definitely encourage you guys to check out a money matters but sales event is coming up for bdc uh if you go to uh, blackdiamondclub.com uh you can become a member of black diamond club and get a discount to the upcoming sales workshop in dallas i think there's like two or three seats left if my memory serves me correct there i'll give my quick tip of the week you know, content marketing has been a huge thing for the last couple of years, uh, but a lot of especially chiropractors struggle with it uh, when it comes to the what should I do and what would get me the most best bang for my buck? What's the best return on investment? And so uh, there's a couple of different ideas and strategies I wanted to throw at chiropractors out there that you can make evergreen content of, meaning evergreen is it's always valuable. You can constantly put it out. You literally could just run an ad going back to this content pretty much every day every if you day. wanted to. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, the big ones for chiropractors, I believe, and this doubles dips is FAQs. So having a frequently asked question section uh, not only is great from an SEO perspective, but a great perspective from helping with conversions as well. So you can double dip. FAQs, you can constantly be adding to those if you see more relevant questions, or you can just keep it what your, your, your 10 to 12 typical ones are. Yeah. Um, another great one is uh, jargon, uh, like a glossary term, maybe for language that we use, like subluxation and adjustment and other words and language things that you'll be saying, phrases as they get to be in your uh, your your office and in your partnership. Um, lastly is how-to manual, or a couple more, how-to manuals. Uh, those are great. Uh, side note on those, those are great now for doing transferring to video content, and you can turn that into a list building structure. So how-to, uh, one of my favorites, Lacey, was uh, one of our mutual clients in Samurai, and they also coach with you in the IPO, was, they were starting to come up with a, how to get out of the car when you're pregnant, how to get into bed when you're pregnant, uh, yeah. because that was their market. So it was a basically how to everything to make your life better being pregnant. Um, uh, lastly was product reviews. So if you have a list of beds or uh, a list of chairs or a list of anything else related congruent to your business and your practice, you could have a product review channel or a page like blog article. I'm sorry, Lacey, what was that? No, I said I like it. I think that we, Sean and I have recommended quite a bit of our clients to do that, to go and review products that, you know, are pertinent to the, the target market and ideal client that they serve. You know, so if you understand your ideal client, you need to go review um, products that they're looking for. That'll be super powerful because it will, just like you're saying, it will drive them to your website, to your information. Yeah. Um. It's so much house cleaning, I think, but I just want to go back through this before we leave. February 14th, we're going to announce our next uh, major keynote for summer camp. This individual is going to just knock it out of the park and uh, has over an hour and a half uh, plus a lunch training session. So almost uh, three and a half hours, we'll say, of training and, and delivery of content. Um, okay. yeah, this is, yeah, this is – Lacey was a huge fan of this individual before, and so she got super stoked. Um we are uh, two months, uh, less than two months away from the Berkshire experience. Uh, both Lacey and I will be presenting. Um, I'm going to be talking about meme building, uh, amongst other things. My goal is that by the end of the night, uh, Irene Gold says I was the best ever. Um, <laughs> so that will be interesting. What are you, you're going to be sharing? Do you know what you're, you're still working on yours? I think I'm going to be doing uh, communication of chiropractic. Okay, cool. And Sean will be there amongst many other geniuses, especially my favorite, Dr. Mo, Moe Andrews, who is the brain specialist in chiropractic. Um, and uh, then me and Sean will be at Chiropractic Rocks the following week. Uh, so a lot going on as we head into summer camp, but I want to encourage you guys, get go to come to summer camp, 
Com. Get your tickets. Oh, next week we're going to be in St. Louis. That's right. We're going to come to minicamp. Come to minicamp. St. Louis. Come to minicamp.com. It's a less than 50. It's $49 ticket. If you're in the St. Louis or surrounding area, it's uh, Lacey, myself, Sean, uh, Alex, Vidan, and Dan Bay from, from close for Cairo. It's going to be a one day slash party slash seminar. Tons of mind uh, masterminding and, and just Q and a, uh, I can guarantee you that this will be the best fifty dollars you spent on uh, before the Super Bowl. I think that's it for right now. We got that's a lot it. going on. <laughs> yeah, uh, see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much.